you, you say that you're an artist, uh, but, but you've been able to make a very powerful statement with your, your paint and your brushes. And, and part of that powerful statement was the exhibition you painted, Silent Testimony. And you've said to me many times that that's not an exhibition that's about the past. It's about the here and now. It's, it's, about, it's about the present. And that those people who we've just described as being left behind, uh, for them, their past is today. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I think that is the key to the exhibition. Although, beside each of the 18 paintings, there is a little bit of text that I wrote mm. that relates to the stories. That's the only reference to the past. And, and it's a very neutral text. You know, well, it you, has to be. You don't, mean, you don't talk about people being brutally murdered or, 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 or other terms. You simply state the facts. It, that, that's correct, isn't it? It's like, um, yeah, I mean, it, it did start off with adjectives and adverbs. But as I refined the texts, I found myself removing and editing an awful lot out. And I let the paintings become the adjectives and the adverbs. The other parts that I removed with a reference to what background someone had. Mm -hmm. There's no reference to Protestant and Catholic. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no reference to IRA, mm -hmm. UVF, SAS. What I wanted to look at was raw human loss right now. Universal loss. In a place, Barney, where, as you know, sadly and tragically, there still is a difference in certain parts of this place the Protestant loss and Catholic mm -hmm. loss, Catholic loss and Protestant mm -hmm. loss. And what I wanted to do is have people walk into that room and not know, mm. but look at a father's grief, mm. having lost his child, mm. and another father's grief, and not be able to separate them. Because mm. so often in this society, that was what we did. Mm. Mm. And it became part of the tribal aspect of living in this place. The eyes in those portraits, many people have commented about those 18 sets of eyes, uh, how loudly they speak. Uh, were you surprised at the response to, to the exhibition? I, I think over 100,000 people have now visited it. It's, it's become a sacred, a sacred place. I think it was Eamon Malley who likened it to the Stations of the Cross. Um, w w what has been your reaction to that reaction and, and that response to Silent Testimony? Silent Testimony started off for me as a very personal kind of quest. Whenever I started making my head paintings in 2010, I realised as an artist I may have found the vehicle through which to express my deeply held views and emotions on where we are, we were as a society and what we were doing for those people who really counted in this place. My idea was simply to paint a couple of paintings of people who covered loss and I spoke to Wave mm -hmm. about that and uh, Wave offered to partner me and to introduce me and as time went on and we got a few names of people to paint, we realised that we needed to broaden it. We needed to make sure that if anybody walked into that room to see the paintings, that they would be, they would be touched and would feel close to at least one of the stories. Mm -hmm. It could mm -hmm. relate to them. And yeah, I, what I would say, Barney, about the eyes and about the way they're done is that, um, I, I painted what I saw, mm. and I painted what I felt. Mm -hmm. Whenever I went into each of those homes to spend two to three hours with the people, drawing them, photographing them, um, or the people came here, these are people who hadn't had an opportunity to tell their story at mm. all. Mm -hmm. No one had been interested. That's the afterthought, isn't it? Yeah. And what I was doing was I was coming in as an artist and I was suddenly interested mm -hmm. in what they had to say. Mm -hmm. um, 
partly because I knew I had a task to do to make the painting. Mm. And with any painting that I make, I need to have as much information as I can. Mm -hmm. And so getting to know the person is critical. A lot of trust there. But yeah, I mean, and I don't take that for granted no. at all. But what I would say is I built everything into the paintings. Mm. I, uh, this is nothing in comparison to the trauma which these people are daily carrying. But I, I w it was a traumatic experience for me mm -hmm. to spend a year closely working with 18 people, hearing their stories. I've got to say, Barney, in the graphic detail that you'll be aware of, mm -hmm. Um, you know you know that we got sanitised sound bites mm. at the time. Mm. What often made the lunchtime news didn't make the evening news because something else had occurred. And it was normally somebody has been shot dead. Mm. Somebody has been caught in a bomb, bomb attack. Mm. But I was hearing the graphic horror of what it meant for a father to witness the aftermath of their child being caught in a bomb mm. attack, what that actually literally meant, what that looked like. And what I decided to do, Barney, is build, build any trauma that I felt back into the painting. I was using my art as a way to deal with that myself. So hopefully the power of that comes through in the actual paintings. I think everyone, see, I think everyone has seen that it does. Uh, and y you know what you've just said, I mean, I talk about it as, as people becoming numbers and news. Uh, what you were face to face with was the very personal impacts uh, and stories that extend across a very long period of time. 